right, everyone, we'll start the meeting for February 26th. Um, let's start with the minutes of our last meeting, which is oh. February 12th. All right, does that, has everyone read the minutes of the 12th and has anyone had any changes? Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and that's been approved unanimous. All right, I am going to turn this over to Jennifer and Jordan. And uh, it's, a, it's a big night with the huge, two big budgets. So I'm turning it over to you and take us through it all. Yeah. Start off with facilities. Start with facilities. We'll get yeah. I can now uh, share this. Yeah, we threw up the um, the budget book numbers. We can take our line to point to it, but I think we can't read it actually. That's what I thought. Next slide, please. Um, so just the main points of this: uh, the facilities department. So they oversee a total of thirty-five buildings, uh, forty-six and a half staff. Most of the staff will appear under the school budget uh, from their uh, from where they're paid, but. Um, you'll see that in the actual um, employees uh, that are cut uh, whose salaries are covered under this budget, it's only um, it's only a minimum, but the majority of them um, are under uh, the supervision of uh, Rob from schools. Um, so 46 and a half staff, um, 2,000 pieces of equipment. Most of this, um, if you remember, they were doing the logging of the equipment in their uh, computer management system, uh, asset essentials. They have the vast majority of all the major equipment currently um, cataloged in this uh, in this system. Uh, Rob did tell us there are various minor odds and ends that they will be adding in um, as need be, but the majority of the major equipment is in there and accounted for. Um, so they also oversee the repairs, uh, the maintenance, uh, cleaning of school and town buildings. They do the removal of the snow for the school lots and they perform some salt and landscape and work at the buildings, uh, at the town buildings and at the school buildings. Um, so for the buildings uh, whose budgets that facilities doesn't control that school, DPW, fire and police, um, for the repairs that they'll do at these buildings, they will often send the invoices over. But generally speaking, any building that's not school, DPW, fire and police, you'll see that the repairs uh, will fall under their budget. So large picture items, uh, staffing, they haven't lost really any personnel. Um, anyone that has uh, left has been replaced, but um, several positions that will appear, that appear underneath the school budget, the technicians mostly, um, they remain unfilled. Uh, they did recently make an offer to an electrician that they are hoping to hire. Um, couple things that we'll get into once we go over the budget. Um, the electricity rates, um, they did increase from the last three year contract. Uh, we had very favorable rates that were um, about, uh, it's You're missing eight, a zero. Huh? You're missing a zero. Uh, yeah, yeah zero yes zero. I am. Um, all right, so add, add <laughs> zeros in 0, 0.0. 862 cents yeah. uh, per kilowatt hour in the previous three year contract. And they were, uh, they rose to 0 0.01285 cents per kilowatt hour for 2024. And notably, delivery charges have risen about 7%. Uh, they're currently negotiating a new contract with rates that are going to be expected to be less than what 2024 are, but they're not going to be nearly as favorable as 2023 or 2020 to 2023. Unfortunately, the delivery charges, there's really not much that you can do when it comes to these charges. It really is set by the utility. There's a 
at the state level, there is um, some oversight, but for all intents and purposes, when we go out for our contracts, we don't have a lot of control over it. Um, and notably, there were three properties that were added to the facilities budgets that used to be under control of the uh, of the ARB. That's the Robbins Library. Actually, it's not. Oh. Sorry, that was my. Oh, I did make a typo. Yeah, that it's the Central um, School, the Maple, and the Jefferson Park. Yeah. yeah, sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, yes. So, getting into the budget, not much um, has really changed. Um, you'll notice that the uh, collective bargaining um, agreements for the. Oh, I'm sorry. Can we uh, switch? So the collective bargaining agreements, they haven't been settled. It's not likely something that's going to be happening for um, that cover that cover uh, this union. So that's <clears throat> so anyways, moving on. Um, so over time, not much has changed. Just uh, a question came in about the overtime rates and what that number's at and why it's so high. Um, we did ask Rob if he felt that additional uh, personnel would be needed. Um, I think he's comfortable with the amount of employees that are covered by overtime, um, but this is simply just for the routine scheduled maintenance or routine scheduled service that are currently um, scheduled. So it's nothing really above and beyond. It's just really what's scheduled for right now. So just to note that the yep. overtime is mostly for things like yoga report pools and salting. So it needs the overtime because it's like at night or something. You know, it's not, it's not necessarily happening. At the yeah. Or if there is, there's additional service like landscaping, like if you need to clean up a property before a major event, they'll do landscaping. And um, that usually comes out of overtime. A uh, question came in about auto allowance. So uh, it's the day and night supervisor, the maintenance supervisor, project manager, craftsman. Um, they're all paid a stipend for their own vehicle use. They don't have a town vehicle. They use their own um, and they're paid a flat stipend um, every year for it. Professional maintenance was increased $36,000. Um, so this is for and this is mostly for uh, additional um, additional security, additional control and access. Uh, basically, it's the building cards that people can uh, they can control who's coming in and out of the facilities. That was something that they've that they've added in. Um, yeah, so it's the ARB buildings and the new security monitoring system. The electricity rates we went over, so that's the that's probably the biggest increase you'll see in the fifty five thousand. Um, and something to note about the materials, uh, this is line item five uh, fifty two twenty four. Um, you'll see that the spend has been hot was higher in fiscal year twenty three. It was budgeted for twenty seven uh, a little over twenty seven thousand dollars and. They're finding that they need to purchase a lot more materials um, out of the budget. So um, something that we've that we had uh, told Rob, something that we would like to see is just do you need to yeah, if you need to increase that number in the years, we, I think we would like to see what the actual spend is, reflect more accurately what it's budgeted for. Um, he did explain that most of this is, you know, the, it's the large tools, the special equipment, it's filters, repair parts, any rentals that they'll need to do in order to make the repairs that they need. Um, so I think moving forward, um, as you know, keeping in mind that they recently redid the facilities and add a lot of buildings into this, and um, there's going to be further changes uh, next year as more of the DPW buildings come on and are ready to use, um, and the dust has settled from that. I think we would just like to see these num that number start to even itself out. It's a question about professional services. So professional services, this will be like minor architectural work that might come up. An example would be if, um, you know, the library would need to 
uh, do like an ADA bathroom. They would have like minor plans done, not like a full, like a large scale renovation, but just minor, uh, minor plans that would need to be drawn up. They would be done by a third party consultant. And the question came in about green repairs. Um, so as a reminder, I think we talked last year that Rob wanted to keep this uh, line item uh, funded at the level that it was, even though there was only a uh, little of uh, uh, $7,632 spent last year. He does like to keep this amount in case there are grant opportunities that are available and many of them will have matching funds and that's where this will pay out of. Um, he does anticipate on using uh, this line item this year. He did tell us about some initiatives that he's doing. Um, uh, he's looking to do more LED uh, light conversion on the buildings. And uh, very interestingly, he was uh, using some of this money to do um, energy efficiency upgrades to the Zamboni. Um, he talked about uh, he talked about doing this um, uh, basically doing like this aerating system to help it be more efficient. This is the water that goes into the Zamboni. So it's pretty neat. I was a hockey guy. I've never mm -hmm. growing up, never heard of anything like this. And I was around rinks uh, a lot of my life. So I thought it was very, it was a great initiative and it sounds like uh, it might help us be more energy efficient, cleaner, and uh, hopefully save uh, some money. Just to note that this green buildings money doesn't get spent unless we're matching something. So we don't use it without there being a grant somewhere. So if there's a grant and we need to have some matching money, that's where it comes from. We don't have a grant, we don't use it. So that's why it goes up and down each year. So one question, uh, so something that came up that uh, we would like everyone to know, um, Rob did bring it to our attention that the electricity costs, we've added more money into this budget, but with um, the facilities budget has paid for all of the electricity out of the new DPW building, and that's including all of the new, uh, that's including everything with IT. So all of the IT infrastructure, all the associated cooling systems with it. Um, he did, when we originally talked with Rob, Rob put out a pretty high number after talking with Alex and Rob about it afterwards, I think Alex had a much more conservative estimate on what he thinks might we might end up having to uh, transfer into make the facilities budget ba balance out. Rob initially had given us a number um, and it was quite high. It was almost a two hundred. What do we mean a high number? High number of over like we're spending more than the budget amount. And Correct. so that was very scary because we said, okay, wait, no, we need to transfer money into this budget. And it turns out not entirely. We may need to, but not only when we're these numbers. Yeah, nowhere, uh, Alex doesn't believe it's going to be anywhere near the $200,000 mark. Um, he gave a pretty detailed explanation for how the utility costs were, were being accounted for in the different buildings, including the uh, some of the rental properties like 23 Maple, the community center at 27 Maple, and uh, the Jefferson Cutter House. Um, so, so I think basically we encumber the amount, but we don't, but we aren't necessarily going to spend all that because in certain cases there's going to be people who are renting those buildings. So 23 Maple is going to be rented by the Mystic River. Association, Mystic, what's the water, water, water Shed Association, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and so they're starting in April. So so even though we've covered that amount, we know we're not going to spend it all because they are going to take the bills. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple things like that. DBW actually hasn't paid their half yet. In court, you know, so so the nu the number that we saw that was very scary represented the number of munis that hadn't things hadn't been settled out right. They hadn't DBW hadn't paid their part. You know, there was extra encumbrances and so forth. And I think generally the, the story around electricity is that we have a lot of moving parts, right? We have these buildings that we have, like 23 Maple, Maple that we took over for town use, but they're not eventually gonna be town use, right? Or we have, we're covering electricity costs for some construction projects right now because somebody has to cover it, but it may not be facilities in the end. So, so there's just a lot of sort of moving pieces right now as, as, as 
this uh, one department goes into here and then this moves over here and this one over there. And this year is just going to be really weird, but we'll know more what things look like next year. What the real, real number look like. And to finish out this year, um, I think we may have said this, but Alex feels confident that it's most likely can be handled by transfer. Uh, department transfers. He said we may, he may end up having to come to uh, come to us to do a reserve fund transfer, but I think he's pretty confident at this point that it can be handled by uh, departmental transfers. And he believes strongly that uh, by next year around budget season, they'll be able to more accurately account for what the new energy costs are going to be at the building so that there won't be any more surprises in that the budget and facilities will be able to better reflect what the costs are going to be all the more uh, while anticipating once they have the dust is settled and they've put more of the energy efficiency measures in like they want to that they'll ultimately end up spending, uh, saving money in the long run. And I think lastly, the offsets, um, there was a question about the offsets that came in and the offsets were from fire police and the library. Any questions? All right, uh, first Annie, then Alan, and then Charlie. Okay, so the electricity and the natural gas lines here, those are for all the buildings they're supervising. They're not they're not just for their department, it's like oh yeah, yeah. It's everybody yeah. they're covering. Okay. Well, not the schools. And you're saying they're trying to do more energy efficiency. Are they doing any kind of talk about transitioning away from using any natural gas at all? Uh, so just to be clear, the DPW building is all electric. No, I know. That. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we have, you know, we, uh, at the schools, there's a $2 million grant that's being used to offer money mm -hmm. to look into adding um, school <laughs> at, the, at the elementary schools. That can't, may involve uh, like a ground, you know, a air source heat pump that also controls heating. But there's the study is going to be to try to figure out if that makes sense. Okay. You know, what are the incentives from the federal government and state? Mm -hmm. You know, what what will it cost us long term? What will it cost us immediately? That kind of stuff is, is still sort of unknown. We know electricity prices have gone up. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might have seen there was an article in the New York Times recently about how. As as these sort of coastal cities have electrified, the electricity costs have gone up. Um, is that permanent? Is that temporary? You know, I don't know, right? We know that we had a really good electricity contract a few years ago, and then we had a really bad year, and it's going to get a little better, but not not nowhere near as good as it was three years ago. Okay, and I know the high school will have solar panels, so they'll be generating some of their own electricity. Are we expanding on that idea at all? Or, you know? Yeah, so um, so right now, every almost every single solar panel that the town runs is we contract at, right? So we don't own any of those. Right. Um, there is some investigation analysis being done to see if it makes sense to buy some solar panels. And that might mean long term, the no print costs, but long term, that will reduce costs. There's a feeling that the, the deal is just not quite as good when you're merely renting it. Um, but yeah, there's. Um, you know, it's going to be a question of the town values. What do we want? You know, what do we want to you know, like where do we want to get to in a few years versus the upfront costs, which are heavily subsidized right now, but not free, um, versus what you know what that's costing us, you know, or included what's that, what's that costing us the that and electricity is more expensive right now than it used to be. Right, but when we do a solar contract, even if we're contracting for those panels, we're getting a fixed price on that electricity at the current market. Um, that was the conversation so, we yeah. had about net metering credits. Yeah, I think I don't know if those change each year or if there's like a three-year contract. I actually don't know about that. The net metering credits. <laughs> yeah, generally you have a contract well, yeah. for a personal solar. You have a contract yeah. with the solar company. You pay a fixed kilowatt hour price for the electricity the solar panels generate. Right. The company gets the SRX, et cetera. Right, right. If you purchase them or you lease them, you get the SRX credits and you get that metering. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I, I know we're getting something. I don't know. I don't know the details. Okay. 
Um, yeah, no, mostly no. on the school bill, no, no, as we know. It doesn't the yeah, it doesn't affect the budget. Um, right. So, so I think I think we are at a pivot point right now, right? Yeah. Because we're going to look into um, adding air conditioning at the at the elementary schools, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a real question about what that's going to look like. Um, you know, we've made the BB, the high school all electric, the BBW is all electric. There are a few buildings in town that are still on oil, mm -hmm. so those are potentially opportunity costs, you know, or, or extra opportunities to, to make changes there. Although the two buildings that are still oil, which are Carmenter and Twenty Three Maple, are not entirely being paid for by us. Right. Um, but and we have a lot of incentive grants from the state, from the federal government, but it is extra money, so the capital fund is going to have to look into it if it makes sense. And I think also something to add. Um, when we were talking about Rob uh, and whether or not he felt like he had enough staffing on uh, to be able to take care of what he's doing, I think he's comfortable with what he has for technicians, for custodians. It'd be great if he could fill some of the more of the tech, uh, technical um, positions. But I think the one thing that he would really like to see in the future would be somebody that could be more on top of these types of energy energy efficiency. Um, measures and how we can save money yes. using them. Somebody that can be that can look for ways to be more energy efficient to ultimately save on electricity. I think that that's something that we would like to see in the future. Somebody so we, just yeah, one soul. There's there's somebody at the schools, but but he doesn't have access to that person from the oh, other counties. Manager on staff on the town side. We don't. We have Tally Fox. Is that what you mean? Who doesn't actually necessarily deal with everything? No, no. Energy manager. There's an energy manager who worked to for the schools who's working on school school right. remix. That person has not yet been contacted. What so we understand. We it doesn't mean that that person is not accessible at some point, but just not yet. Okay. So there are three costs to electricity, right? There's the um, the delivery costs, the negotiated price that we get, which is the 0 0.08 or is it 0 0.129 or whatever. And then there is how much energy are we using, mm -hmm. right? So we we negotiated the contract for the, for the supply. We don't have any control over that. The we have no control of the transmission costs because that's they can change that. And I, I, I think the state is sort of looking at that, but we don't have any control. But we do have some control about how much energy we use. So if we're more efficient, if you know we turn off things in the weekend, you know stuff like that, we can we can make a difference there and. It's not quite being done yet um, in the way that it started to be done at the schools. And so, again, this, there's a person at the school who Rob feels he doesn't quite have the access to yet. Anything else, Dan? No, sorry. I'll do it. Um, what is related to that is the planning. We do have an environmental planner and a sustainability manager. So, you know, maybe, maybe they could get to it. But the question I had at the very end, you mentioned uh, offsets, you mentioned flocks and stuff. In the budget, it's all from the school. I want to clarify that. Um, it says school. Well, maybe I did. Left school offset for one of the positions. Well, it's the same number. Oh, it is. One five seven five one. You're right. So um, if it's more than that, then I'd just like to know to put it in work. Yeah, that's a good point. Last year, I've gotten information about offsets. And I'd ask them if the numbers are similar this year. I let me clarify that. That's a good okay. I, I, I said yeah. for the for, for our yeah. report to yeah, yeah, yeah. be transparent about what yeah. okay. um Charlie and then Al Kelsey. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Christine. Um so the all of the maintenance people that are working in the schools, they're not in this budget, right? Exactly. Correct. Yeah. But do they report to him? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and actually, it's it's the number that um, was given the forty six point five. That's actually in the school. That's the location that people are over there. Yeah. So, are there any costs in here that are reflective, for example, of the the new high school and increased maintenance costs? Yeah, electricity costs and maintenance. As soon as so, the maintenance numbers are done by square footage. So, as soon as you the square footage of the building is controlling the maintenance the cost will act like an industry standard. Or, and those are things for like replacing a light switch or something. You say, well, how many square feet do we have? What kind of numbers are we going to get? Increase the numbers. But are they, are they, um, is the school, is your, 
if, if he's got higher cost per square foot for the schools, are the schools paying for that or is the budget paying for that? Yeah, I think, so the professional maintenance of 36,000 is the extra landscaping and the extra security. He mentioned the fact that there's a higher price, but you're right, it's not in this budget. It's in, it must be in the budget. Uh, on the uh, accounts number uh, 5269. And that number has the number there. Yeah, maybe that's some of the Yeah, so there's a huge jump. I mean, between the actual in 2023 and then what's forecast for 24. And 25. I don't know whether they're actually making those numbers or not. That was the increase um, from last year. So they really can they took a lot more from into fiscal year 24. So I think that was what I was referring to actually. So there is a industry standard number that you know if you have this many square feet, this is the cost per square feet. And we were basically, it was for these small repairs, a door, a light switch, or something like that. And they're just in the budget of here's how many square feet we cover, and here's how much it costs. What we've seen the last three years is that we keep adding building facilities, which isn't back to the plan, right? But so have we increased by factor three and a half? We have increased. So in the area. Yeah, yeah. So, so we've added DPW, which was not. We've added the school building space. Um, we've added the area buildings this year. Last year, I have to go back to my notes. We've added a bunch of buildings last year. Well. I, I just know there were the, me, those additions the, aren't gross additions there. I the the uh, school had a space before the new high school, and BBW had space before the new BBW building. Things were not actually in the facility budget. Things are being moved in facilities that, that were not there before. But I can tell you what the exact thing that was. Um, the actual cost here. Let me see if I can see it. I do not have that. I think it might just give us this size. Looking at facilities or the I was looking at facilities. I think Mike just gave us the DPW actuals because the actuals, but we don't know what the actuals are for 2024 given this budget, right? So I'm sorry, I don't put Thank you. Um, El Toski and then okay, uh, two things uh, professional maintenance. Uh, the biggest ticket there, you mentioned security, but that can't be all of it. No, no, actually, remember it. So, one of the memos we got at the very beginning was that we had added an extra 30,000 for landscaping. I'll tell you, this is something that Rob was not that excited about because he didn't think he had to do landscaping. <laughs> he was thinking, was he does buildings, but when we added these DPW buildings, they were like, oh, you have to do landscaping as well. And so, those are contractual. We're sending items. okay. So, anything else besides security and landscaping? That was it. That's it. that's part of the budget memo we got at the very beginning of the year. Okay. And security includes alarms, cameras, and uh, that access controls. So, um, so there's different fees associated with that the regular, um, the annual fees, as well as whatever you need to uh, to maintain the systems as it comes up. Okay. Uh, and then the other thing is, I'm assuming the Fox and the Mount Gilboa costs have been integrated into the other categories. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. yeah, Fox gets actually paid for there, a lot of things are put there for tracking purposes, but then they don't actually stay in the budget. So, Fox gets paid for out of the, the library budget or out of the um, Friends of Fox, you know, they, which is now gets merged with Robin, but they, they pay for those expenses. Now, the Boa, the Boa, what we understand is actually there aren't a lot of expenses right now. There, there aren't a lot of expenses right now. There are expenses previously. First of all, it would be rented, and then there's expenses to maintain it. 
Last year, there was expenses for security because we were storing stuff there, and we are no longer storing stuff there anymore. So we're not doing that extra security. Okay. Was there any discussion about finally doing something with that building, like burning it down? <laughs> yes, there is, but neither facilities nor DPW is at all involved in that. It's the planning department and it's the community outreach. It's not involved in burning it down. No, not, they're not involved in whatever happens to it. Whatever happens to it is going to happen with the planning department talking to the community. Which means they're not involved in burning it down. They're not Declare to school, give it to Belmont, and we'll be gone. We'll oh, Jones. Yeah, there have been, been a number of meetings about that, and right. all the options are on the table from restoring it to <laughs> rental, migrant housing, art center, whatever, yeah. to tearing it down. And, and, and everything in the middle because there are some nice architectural features and one of the plans that's looking good is to basically take it down to the platform and make a viewing platform with the beautiful stairs and things like that take out the cost. But it, it's still, it, it's all on the table. It's undecided. But facilities is, is like, they lost their heads. <laughs> they don't have to deal with it anymore. Thank you. Thank you. So I just noticed in last year's budget, 2023, the budget forecast was 105,000, but then it it came in the actuals for 2023 was only 41,000. There were parent annex. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So it just seems like a pretty big drop, and I I wonder if that's why. There's such a big jump in the 2024 and 2025 budgets. I think we owe, we owe you clarity on that. We don't have clarity. Right? The okay. the 2023 professional maintenance line actual um, budgeted. What was that left in 23? Was 105. And you're looking at repairs and maintenance. Repair, yes, yeah. repair and maintenance. I wouldn't be surprised if it was shifted. Instead of putting it on, they were forecasting repair and maintenance to be a higher number and professional maintenance lower. And then they just. Oh, uh, okay. That's my guess. I feel like, I, I feel like the, the repair and maintenance was the one that they said they just take the correct place and they multiply by a number. That's industry standard, but that doesn't mean, especially if there's like a new building or something, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily like the lower cost. But I, we, we will find. No, you are right. That is the yeah. professional maintenance, the yeah. formula driven. Formula um, by the Correct. Yeah. But um, but we, yeah, we, I think we need clarity on this. We have to remind ourselves what buildings were out last year, because there were a bunch of buildings out last year. You know, there are three buildings out this year, plus new DPW building, plus the expanded high school square footage. So that's what's going on. But and I can't then, actually remember what was out last year. And then the school. Budget, they're adding a custodian to the school budget. And, but is that captured here? How does that work? Is it? Nope. <laughs> That's in the school budget. Yeah. yeah, we're missing a couple of preferred names at the high school, but, you know, looking to hire somebody. Yeah, as high school, they figure you need to add staff. Oh, Joan. So how, how do they decide? Oh, sorry. sorry. How do they decide which custodians go under the facilities and which goes under the school? It's sort of nine go under the facilities. So the, they oh, have, there's one, I guess. Yeah, they, they Is have some of the uh, yeah. Oh, there's two couple. Yeah. No school custodians go under the this. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. There, there seems to be a lot of confusion about what facility, you know, what the facilities does and doesn't do. And then having landscaping come here because in the original facilities, is it facilities stopped at the front steps? Yeah. And everything after yep. that went natural resources. Yeah. I'm wondering if if it doesn't exist already, if there could be a mission statement or charter or something for the facilities department. What what I, I think we need to better define what it's responsible. That would answer a lot of these questions. It might be like thirty thousand for landscaping. That should be a natural resource, not mm -hmm. facilities. I think. Yeah. But yeah. so I'm just I think, I think sort of you know feedback. I think we need clarification. That's on the a good point. I know it's evolving. It's yeah, I, mean, I think that, I think the thing to realize is that we're in this 
this is Rob's second tour. We yeah. had a lot of charm before this, right? Jim ran it for a long time. We should. Yeah. <laughs> I assume the 30,000 landscaping was from Jim, but I mean, I, you know, that, that he's, he's the one who put it in there, but I'm not sure. So I'm, I'm just asking for a job description for the department so yeah. we have better clarification about what should be in here and what should be. Yeah. Yeah. Not for this year, but yeah. that's what we're going forward. Thank you. Other questions? Anyone have anything else? I, I guess, um, I don't know if, if anyone went to the uh, presentation at the uh, MMA meeting that we went to in the fall about Lexington and their utilities. I, I just, I've raised that with the school department. What they did is <clears throat> some of the, some buildings, electricity is built, build based on peak demand. And so if your peak demand goes up for 10 minutes or 15 yep. minutes for the day, yes, actually. That, that's kind of that that sets the high mark and that's the rate. Yes. And yes. so that they have found that it's been very cost effective for to put batteries online in addition to solar. So the batteries can offset that peak and it actually is very cost effective and a very good payback. Yep. Holly Fox mentioned that exactly at that point. Uh, she didn't mention batteries, she mentioned well, batteries are critical. They're like right. without the batteries, then then it doesn't work. She mentioned raising the temperatures, <laughs> you know, the buildings during the peak. Um, you know that that if we had better management to cut, to shave off some of the peaks, just from magic, that we could do maybe some of that. So, so this is like but, another concept that yeah they might want to throw into the thing. Yeah, sure. So, Josh, I, I was with you at that presentation, but that was achieved in the renovation of a building, right? I mean, it doesn't mean that you can just sort of put that in all the buildings as a capital cost. I, I don't have any idea what the capital cost is, but it was part, I think, was it the police station or something that they were? I think every building that they touch, they're, they're taking that approach. Right, we have 35 buildings. That's my impression. Yeah, they, but, they, they, but there has to be a, they, they, a they renovation probably, project. It's not a, it's not standalone. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think that's the way they're approaching it. Talia felt that there actually could be some low hanging fruit to do exactly that um, with just better management. You know, but I guess what I'm saying is, again, just so the point is clear, if your peak load is determined at two o'clock in the afternoon yeah. because it's whatever, then turning it down at night doesn't affect that. The no, only no. thing that would affect you that is if you offset it a little bit in the middle of the day. But, but, but you have certain, yes, you could, but yeah. I'm just saying the batteries, you could kind of just turn the dial and generate your, get your electricity from the battery for that 15 minutes, thereby cutting your rate for the entire day. That, it, just depending on how the contract is arranged. If it's a peak load, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think we'll have to have, somebody would need to look into doing a demand reduction um, with a vendor who could assist with that. Right, it's not, it's not just demand reduction. Although obviously that's a good idea. And this is where an energy manager. Is. Yeah, I, mean, right. I think no. I think that's sort of the next thing to sort of push for and sort of and it, Rob wants it, but it's just not sort of that way to our end. Oh, sorry, Italian Fox. Um, I think last year had um, offered to come in and do a presentation to finance committee about right. electrification. Did you mm -hmm. want me to follow you up? Can, yeah, okay. so I can get more information. Yeah. All right, other questions on facilities? Do you have a recommendation? So we recommend the uh, taxation total uh, $1,209,151. Second. Any further questions? All right. All in favor, say aye. Uh, Any opposed? Unanimous. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give, I'm gonna give a big picture thing on public works, um, and then we'll go to natural choices. Current public works with the present divisions, administration, engineering, highway, water, and sewer, and good things we don't have to deal with, motor equipment and repair, and natural resources, and temporary. They have a staff of around 80 people. Their vehicle strength continues to be vacancies. Um, we continue to pay less than our time manager 12 communities. And as we know, we're not being good time manager 12, we're competing with you know, places nearby. nearby. Um, 
to have addresses, um, one of the things that Mike has just done recently is to register a class to become a vehicle training facility. Um, this will allow us to hire people who are not yet commercially licensed and be able to train them on site. Uh, it's not fully operational, it still needs to uh, work on the um, training materials, but it should be up, up and going by the summer. We'll register it already. Um, new DW buildings are finished. Um, there have been a lot of delays. Prices have risen. As you know, we are construction manager on risk, so we are sort of protected. But there are some stresses because of the, the project being lengthened and the extra um, costs for consulting, especially. Um, already, Mike has put in about 300000 of sort of DPW money into this project to sort of relieve the pressure. What's happening right now is the construction company is eating into their profit. Which is making the very end. And so there's this, so even though we're construction manager, we're at risk, we don't want us to be deeply unhappy. So there's a lot of like back and forth, give and take on that. Um, uh, so uh, in the previous years, people have asked about a vehicle management system. Um, this is an interest of Mike, um, but there are costs for the system, both the cost to purchase the system and the cost of staff time to maintain it. Um, basically, is not excused, but he said, you know, we've had the building project, we have a lot of vacancies, especially in our office, central office, and so it's just been sort of harder for his mind to, to, to look into this. He's interested in it, he knows it's a big project, he knows he can't sort of screw up on it, like you have to come up with a program that is both gives you what you want, it's effective, but also is something that staff will use. But know, also that. notably, he is uh, doing a, a trial of a GPS system, which uh, does, I think, a lot of uh, sort of the notifications that you would be looking for, like you can, um, integrate with the system. and it yeah. could eventually yeah. integrate with the system. So right now um, they're doing, it was very minimal effort to get set up um, in the vehicles. It's uh, GPS that will be able to report on vehicle health. It'll be able to notify you when, um, when you know, you check engine, uh, when you need to check your engine, um, when you need to do uh, any sort of other maintenance. So they're sort of playing with that right now, but and with the intention further down the line, uh, when they do do the vehicle management to integrate that. Right, right. He, he knows it's something that people in that finance have been interested in. He's also interested in it. It's not, it, there's just been a lot going on right now in terms of why it hasn't happened yet. Um, so other big picture we found that's out last year, the numbers in the budget book that are actuals are not necessarily the actuals that are in units. So I've done a lot of back and forth testing, and there are explanations for all of them, but they all have to be like looked at and explained. <laughs> um, so one of the things that DBW does has the ability to do is they can move things around at will, right? So, so if you don't spend a lot of natural resources, um, natural resources, for example, has um, salaries budgeted at over a million, but we've been spending under 900,000 each year. Why are we doing that? We have to remove our positions. The extra money that's used off for special projects. And so I actually have a list. I, we've asked for this year for a list of some special projects that happened last year. So we've done um, some Central Lot Islands, we've done some April here, I'm not sure what. Um, I mentioned the GPW stuff. We're doing a thing that I'm very excited about, which is concrete sidewalk shading. I don't know if many, I mean, like, mm -hmm. spent a lot of time in Cambridge. Yeah. You know, you look and see that their sidewalk, rather than replacing our sidewalk, they shave it. So we're starting to do that project. So we spent, um, I don't know where we spent 60000 last year on it. Um, traffic signal painting, some cemetery fence repair. So so basically, as there's extra money, and usually right now, the extra money is because we have vacancies, which is not what he wants. I mean, he doesn't want vacancy, but we have the money, and so he spends it on projects that are needed or not. Um, okay. Natural resources, division maintains 30 parks, 26 playgrounds, 19 athletic fields, and 21 traffic islands. Uh, budget book lists four vacancies. We just filled one of the motor vehicles, so there's only three now. Um, as I said, um, we spend about a million less than we have in the budget book because we just can't fill all of these vacancies. Um, Let's see. Um, okay, so over time, so we had some questions from various people. Um, one of the things that we've, other sort of frustrations is that the overtime numbers that Mike is using are 
five year actuals that he determined three years ago or three or four years ago. So he did the work a few years ago and then he didn't update them. What that means is that um, some of the overtime numbers are a little bit off. Um, and I'm going to make a recommendation, which I played with Mike about the natural resources position. Um, the five year actual overtime is 66,751. The budget book listed as 86,993. So it's an over $20,000 difference. Um, my recommendation, again, with my collecting is to move $10,000 of that to the, um, the field and maintenance. And, we're, and, and also recommend, I'm gonna recommend moving something out there as well. Uh, rather than the reason for not taking the entire 20,000 is that in theory, where we fully staffed, Mike thinks that we'd spend more on overtime. So the overtime doesn't actually reflect the fact that we're understaffed. We don't do extra overtime because we're understaffed. We don't do as much overtime because we're understaffed because we don't have the personnel to do the kind of work that we'd need to do, we'd normally do in overtime. Um, okay. Uh, double time, I've been hovering around 20,000 for the last few years. Um, out of grade pay, the amount was doubled in 2023 because there was a vacancy in the supervisor's position in parks. And because of that, several people were out of class for a while. So every time somebody works out of class, they get a little extra. So we had one person out and then everyone sort of shifted around and moved and and, and needed to get that last money back. Uh, clothing allowance um, is kind of in a year, but it's pretty close each year. Um, the 5202, the extra $20,000 in maintenance is, I was told, in the wrong place. And it actually should be in the uh, maintenance of town fields. And I'll tell you the story about that when we get there. So what I will be recommending today that we move 30,000 from natural resources to the maintenance of town fields to bring that number up to 90,000. Um, let's see, uh, there are several, you know, we, we've seen this before, several places where we packed expenses to then move them. So we're packing rider, you know, we used to rent out rider to a private company. We, there's been a question about what was gonna happen with it. Likely we're keeping it, there's just too much need for it. We, it's being used for the recycling. Um, Stuff and yeah, that's good, I think. Yeah. Um, and so we're probably going to keep it. So, so, but that's why we were tracking it. We we're tracking it because the idea was maybe we rent it out again after the DBW building was done. Um, let's see, materials 5224. If you used to purchase um, materials to obtain playgrounds and fields, like Mark's event, the field for a sporting event, to repair the grass surfaces, irrigation repairs. Some safety equipment for staff. So it's sort of lots of little things. Um, foul weather gear. Um, we had a bump in 2023 because we spent a bunch of money for the big belly solar compactors. <coughs> uh, other purchase services, 5236, is for holiday lights. I asked him at this the cost for like the years has been over 18,000, but it keeps getting budgeted at 15,000. He's comfortable with that. What happened is when you, the Chamber of Commerce used to share the cost with us, but once COVID hit and we had some staff change over, it just wasn't easy to ask for that money at the time. So Mike was covering the number, money, but he thinks we can go back once again to get into the Chamber of Commerce to cover some of that amount. Um, that, and he said, if that doesn't happen, there's also the parking benefit sister. So he was comfortable with keeping that at 15,000. Um, tree planting. Uh, so one of the stresses, I don't know if you know in town, is that there are a bunch of people who love to see more trees planted. Mm -hmm. The department can do tree planting a lot more effectively, cheaply, than we can if we hire an outside contractor. Currently, we have the capacity to do about 300 trees. He's been ramping that up. So like last, the year before last, it was 374, you know, just generally trying to get more. We cut down about 250 trees a year, so we're, we're getting a net increase. Um, there is money, however, in this trees fees fund that is tapped into occasionally. Um, there's potentially more money to hire 
our contractor to do more tree planting, but at a much, much higher cost than we can do it in house. So it's figuring out what makes sense is sort of a long standing debate. And also trying to save more of the mature trees because you know it's easier to save trees than it is to wait for them to grow up from the small. So they do want to do more of that. Yeah, that's a fifty two ninety to tree price management, which is budgeted at thirty thousand. Um, it actually costs us sixty thousand, but thirty of the thousand is coming from that tree please fund. The tree please fund is the amount that a contractor. I don't know if you some people have been to a meeting. Um, we've added sort of extra rules. If, if a contractor tears down a tree in front of the building, they have to either build a new tree and put a new tree in or tribute to a fund that then goes to add trees in town. So that's, that fund is called the Trees Please Fund. It has a bunch of money in it. Um, some of that money now is being used for the Emerald um, Act for, for um, to start to save those trees. Um, Historic sculpture maintenance. Um, they're used to restore things like Uncle Sam's statue, the town hall flag base, and the Miami Hunter, and various plaques around town. Some of them are work that needs to be done every once in a while, perfect wrong. But there's also apparently we every year have to go and like, you know, shine them up and wax them and stuff. So <laughs> that's sort of a basic maintenance cost every year. But it goes, but then there's occasionally some things that have to be repaired. Uh, small equipment is used to purchase hand tools, weights, etc. Okay, questions. Questions. Adam Jones. Just a comment. I've, I've yeah. watched the town tree people <laughs> carefully, and watched private contractors carefully, and clearly the town tree people are the professionals. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing. Right. Right. Talked a little, I've watched them. Yeah. So we're getting good. Good value for money. Yeah. Carolyn. So, <clears throat> Jennifer, thanks for an excellent presentation. Um, I have two sort of uh, going back to your, your high level yeah. uh, comments. Yes. Uh, you said that the UPW department is using operating funds to, sub to subsidize the, build the new building project. Is that more or less what I heard you say? I, I did say that, yeah. So, um, oh, they did. They did. In the why? why did, I mean, we that building project was raised at least twice in town meeting after the initial yep. Yep. project. But I think it's forty-four million dollars now, yep. up from twenty-eight. Who's managing that? So, I don't want to put this in an official report. They're not terribly happy with the um, construction company, um, but there's also been some additional sort of surprises um, related to um, contamination issues. So the way issues. Contamination issues. Everyone knew it was contaminated, but it's more contaminated than we thought, which is then, you know, pushing out the project. And the longer a project takes, the yeah. more expensive it is. I think we all knew it was pretty well as contaminated as could possibly be. I mean... Mike said that it was more contaminated than we, even, than we knew it was, is what he said. I mean, there's hypervalent chromium under that place. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, personally, I'm, I don't know if that Daryl's not here, but you no, know, I think that's a, is Daryl on the Daryl is, Daryl, can you hear us? Somebody ought to be oh, yeah. understanding why we take an operating fund to subsidize in the. What I understand is it's a dance. So, right now, they've blown through all the material. They're eating into their pockets. We don't want them to walk away from the job. You know, we need to get finished. And so there's been, there ha, there's some give and take because of that. They're not happy about it, but there there has to be, there has to be some sort of discussion back and forth um, to make sure that they're not so miserable because we eating all their profits that they do a crappy job walk away. So, so uh, the second comment is on you, you made. Um, I think it was on the natural resources, or it could be, is that you wanted to move yes. $10,000 from one budget to $20,000 to somewhere else. Yeah. Is that our job? I mean, this is really the responsibility of the town manager and and the deputy town manager, not the finance committee, to move numbers from one category to the other. I mean, honestly, it doesn't matter since they have to move things on their own, right? Like this budget is all 
Either of these all the same budget. Um, the twenty thousand was a mistake. It shouldn't have been there. It should have been in in the other place. Um, so I was going to recommend it just to rectify that mistake. And then Mike and I talked about moving the other map. We don't want to. It's fine. But when we get to um, Maintenance and kind of Build, we'll see that sixty thousand is just too low. So we so it's sort of I'm not I don't love when we have budget numbers that just don't quite reflect what we're really going to spend. Yeah, for transparency mm -hmm. reasons. Right. We know this is the two thousand is too low, and that's actually why he had initially intended to put the extra twenty thousand in. We know that that's too low. So you know, it's just not a great deal. But if, if if people aren't comfortable moving it, then well, I'm not trying yeah. to stop it. I'm just yeah. raising the question. I mean, whether or not this is a finance committee issue. I mean, if it's a mistake, and he wants to correct no, it. The twenty thousand is a mistake. But if we're moving it from one category to another, um, I mean, it just strikes me like it's almost micromanagement of the town manager. Oh, Jim. Well, just as, as the chair said, this is about reporting the most accurate numbers to town meeting. We're not actually changing anything, but we should be as, as, as transparent and accurate as we can in our presentation. So we know it was a mistake. Yeah, that was a mistake. The, the extra 10,000 is a recommendation of mine to again more accurately what we're actually paying for this. But and you've run that. And Mike is agreeing that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was already, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was sort of disturbed every time I came across something that was not, doesn't reflect the historical actual, actual like it sort of raises <laughs> things for me. And I was like, wait, that's it. And so I kept asking questions. In some case, it was, there was an explanation. Oh, we're going to return to the historical actual. So even though we haven't spent that, we're going to go back. In some cases, it's well, we're not fully staffed, and that's why you know, that's an obvious explanation. But for the town field, and I'm going to get to that soon, there are some real reasons why that number of 60,000 is just never going to be, we're never going to be that low again. Jennifer, why don't you talk to, why don't you go on to fields? So, yes, it sounds okay. like these two budgets are related. Yes. Sure, sure. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so the, the maintenance of, oh, actually, let me, yeah, I should tell you one more thing about the extra money that we've been spending. Let's see. Oh, the extra money that was spent in 5202, I realized I didn't tell you this. Um, you know, I said that when we have staff vacancies, we spend extra money. Yeah. Last few years, we've updated Buckfield, Five Pine Infield, and Scanale Field. And this year, we're going to spend money on our side oh. on soccer fields if we have extra. And then usually we get a lot of spending right in June <laughs> as the year closes. Okay, so maintenance plan fields. Um, so a bunch of years ago, we had this agreement with um, Park and Rec where EPW would pay 50000 to maintain plan fields and Park and Rec would pay the rest. A few things happen. The most important is that Park and Rec is now covering the porta potties. And so the money that they would have had extra to pay for the field maintenance are now being spent for the porta potties. There was also some temporary like money shortfalls because of um, COVID and you know things get canceled and stuff like that. Um, but just long term, the last few years, Parkland has paid nothing. It's entirely come to the GPW budget, and the assumption is that as long as they're coming porta potties and they're not dramatically raising their fees, that that's going to continue for a while. So the actuals um, for maintenance on fields the last few years. Um, FY24 looks like it's about 111,000, almost 112. Um, FY23 is 101,000. FY22 is 83,000. Um, so, so much higher numbers than the $64,000 budgeted amount. How, when did Park and Rec stop paying? Uh, start paying. So, FY19, they were paying them out. FY22 was COVID, so I think there was less money spent, I think. FY21, they stopped paying. I don't know about FY22, but the numbers were lower, though. All right, questions. Uh, I'll pause the Annie. Now, how does the money from the weeks for field maintenance flow through here? 
sorry, how does how does the money for field maintenance? So the field maintenance, um, the money we spend in field maintenance is all contracted work out. Is so all? Con contracted out. Well, so who's paying the contract? They worry about the spending. Yeah. But we, we, we were supposed to get money right. from the field That's leagues. Right. We're soccer. not getting that anymore. Yep. I'm sorry? We're not getting that anymore. We don't. That's right. Not in the last few years. Because what I was told is because they now have to pay for the porta potties, which is a significant amount of money, they don't have extra money to, to Okay, to flow. So, so the money from that the leagues pay goes to Parks and Rec. Yep. And instead of using that money for field maintenance, they're now using it for porta potties. Porta potties and what, you know, I'm sure there's other things. There's equipment, there's various other things that we spend on, on stuff, but they're not spending any money on field maintenance last year. So. Okay, because they were the one complaining about field maintenance. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Oh, I was going to talk. There you go. My turn next. Are you done now? I'm done. Yeah. Anna and the Dean. So, here's the thing. Okay. Park and Rec has like $1.7 million in the bank. How much were they contributing that they're not contributing in more to field maintenance? It was like 40000 I mean, I don't know. So, that's what they're not contributing anymore because they're not contributing about that amount of work. And the fees that the the clubs are paying yeah. are going to cover that forty thousand dollars. They're covering the porta potties now, but they're not going to pay it. They're not going to feel any more. discussion to be had here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that is that an I agree with you, Blair, or is that a? Yeah. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> are you done? Yeah. I don't um, feel like this is a well, fight that Mike particularly wants to pick yeah. on. I think he was happy. He's okay with this. But but at town wide, I get that. Okay, but I, I have one more thing to say about this, and this is your tip of this. Every time you talk about how when they have vacancies, they ship money here, we do this, yeah. they do that, so on and so forth. I would like to see a budget from DPW that doesn't assume they're going to have money for those things because they have vacancies. And then says realistically, this is what we need to spend on all this other stuff. Like I'm like a real budget. Right. If we had no vacancies, they wouldn't be able to cover this project. I projects. understand that. Yeah. I'd really like to understand what those things are and what it would mean to neglect them. Because it feels to me like what we're not getting is a realistic budget from DPW for this. I, I mean, we've gone through all yeah. the departments, yeah, but certainly for natural resources. Yeah. It sounds like it's just not real. Yeah, so all the field, all these extra projects when they revamp a field, that's not in the budget anywhere. That's okay. only paid for. So who do I yell at to get a real budget? Is that Jim? Town manager. Okay. Um, and then we have similar things happening like in highways where the extra money is paid for a sidewalk that was like a complete mess, right? So, and that was an important product, right? I, you know, I get it. Yeah. Okay, but it feels like you're not being realistic yep. about what things actually cost. Yep. So nobody can go and read the budget or even read the actuals for DPW and know what it's actually costing us to do the work that DPW is doing for the town and what their priorities are, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. They're not getting out of this budget what you want to get out of a budget. Yep. Which yep. is a realistic picture of what the thing you're trying to accomplish actually costs. Yeah, no, I get it. I mean, here, here's the explanation of why they don't put in the actuals in the budget book, right? And it makes sense, right? Because if they put the actuals in the budget book, we would ask questions like, is this a standing cost? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's what? No, no, but, but some, because they're special projects, it's not a standing cost, right? So they don't want to put it in the budget book because then it no, looks like it's no, like a, no, no, no. an every year continual no, the when question, these are one-off projects. Question, isn't about the actual. Yes. The question is about those projects. There's no line in the budget. There's no line in the budget. Yep. Yep. There's yep. no, no line in the budget the that point. says, here's the 10 little things that we would do that we wouldn't take to the capital right. planning committee. Right. Okay. Or whatever. It's like it's not a real budget. It's not about whether or not the actuals are real. The budget itself isn't real. Yep. And right. If we're we fully staff, we would not have this extra money and then and then project could would get that. And and we wouldn't know. Right. That there was a need that wasn't being fulfilled because it's never reflected in the budget. Yep. So it's a different problem. The budget, at some point, the budget has to be here's what I need. Even if you don't get it all funded, 
Because until you say, here's what I need, you don't have any way to say, and these are the top 10 priorities, and this is yeah. the stuff that's extra, right? And so it, that's just every budget I deal with. This is the question. It's like, don't start the budget season by telling me that you've already cut the stuff. You think I'm not willing, like, tell me what the whole request is, and I'll tell you whether or not I can get it. So I just like to see a whole real request from Mike for what he needs. And if it's not coming from Mike because it's going through the town manager, then I would like the town manager to talk about what it is he didn't fund in DPW in the real budget that they asked for that assumes all their people are, all their positions are filled. It doesn't assume, oh, we're going to have a $500,000 that we can play with because we have these vacancies. We can't right. Because then the question I have is, then why are we filling the vacancies? We're doing good stuff with 500,000, so leave the people out. Yeah, why do we need to do one budget? <sighs> one way or the other. The point is, we don't I have mean, certain things picture. don't get done, right? Like, for example, um, for NAC resources, we have um, the tree climbers are yeah. really hard to, to fill. And we've had situations recently where we were just not getting any of that done, right? Yeah. And in fact, I remember submitting a request for a tree branch that was in people's face when you stepped off a bus. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, we're not gonna get to that for a while. <laughs> that was their response to me because we don't have the people. So right. so it's not so so there are things that aren't getting done that we need to get done. So we do need to fill the vacancies if we I, could. I get that. Yeah. But even if we do that, then there's um, other stuff that's yeah. not gonna get done. Yeah. And is that higher priority than the things that people are gonna do? We don't have a full picture. Yep. Yeah. Somebody should have a full picture, maybe in my head, but it should be somewhere where the public can see it. That's what the budget is supposed to do. And Charlie and I probably agree about this. The budget should reflect what we're going to spend money on, and it should be prioritized. We can't have everything, okay, and it should be real. After that, we can disagree about what the priorities are and how much. Honestly, if you were to do that, you'd have to change the practice that yeah. the DPW manager has ability to shift things around ever. I, I don't I don't necessarily want to change that practice. I want to know what the real request would be if all those witnesses were filled. Right. And then I want priority decisions made. And then if he has extra money and he wants to go back to the low priority stuff, I don't have a problem with that. But first I want a real picture. Right. That's what I don't feel like I'm seeing. Yeah. Dean? <clears throat> so um so a year ago, this budget came up, and I said I was going to vote against it because our fields were an abomination and they were rotting, and we were stuck in the middle of an intergovernment departmental pissing contest between DPW and REC. Okay, and then we all went to town meeting. And you all got to see pictures of fields that are in horrific condition. We walked by them. Okay, all of that is still true. Okay, um, and it seems to me that the problem is neither. The DPW director, another rec director, just care. Mm -hmm. They don't care. They point at each other, right? Mm -hmm. I laugh, right? I'll tell you, this will be. I usually try to keep different parts, you know, like we all do different parts of our volunteers' lives separate, but now I think we'll be a good time not to, okay? So I'm the treasurer of the Arlington Soccer Club. So that last year, we paid the town $40,000 a year in user fees. We cut them a check. So apparently, Porta Party costs 40 grand here. <laughs> no, they don't. So we got an email from Joe Connolly this year. I'm not sure where that goes. Well, so the funny thing is, so the soccer club pays forty thousand. All the users combined pay like sixty or sixty-five. And so what happens is, we'll have these meetings at the rec department, and we're like, "Hey, these fields are terrible. We got to work on the user fees." They're like, "Yeah, but we don't really want to charge on the Catholic, do we?" Like, well, yeah, they use the fields; they should be charged. Well, yeah, but you know, some of the other groups don't want to pay and they don't want to pay more. And you're know, like, okay, we'll suck it up and pay more, right? So then they're like, the fee's like ten dollars per um per player, I think what they do, which doesn't make any sense because it's not based on utilization of the field. So even though you could have the one sport can have the same utilization as another, the payments are totally off, right? Then the rec department's like, no, we don't want to deal with that. Okay, fine, you want to deal with that. So anyway, so in the fall. We all learned from Joe Connolly, which is like they put the porta potties out to bid. They thought the cost was going to go up, so they were like, "Hey, we're going to increase the fee from ten dollars to fifteen dollars, right?" Um, and apparently, it just uh, and then I'll go back to this. Thing. But so then they were like, "Oh no, the bids came in where we are, so we're not going to increase the fee." Okay, so 
This was like the fourth consecutive year that they told us they were going to increase the fee from 10 to $15. The Sark Club, we budget fee increase every year, and then it never comes through. Hmm. Right? And this is how we do it. We just, the town just nickels out and the fields get worse. Um, it's kind of a funny anecdotal thing. Um, when they reference the $10 fee in discussions, they mentioned that um, Charlie helped impl implement it in like 2001 or something. Like this fee is like really, really ten dollars for a long time, yeah. and they've never increased it. And then they just play games back and forth. And while it may be a small number, if you guys walk these public fields in town, they're all a mess because no one cares. Nobody gives a crap. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. So I, I, <clears throat> I know in years past, field maintenance was a big, big issue, and. Uh, it finally got to the point where we're probably talking back in the 90s that capital budget was set up to re repair fields on a right basis, uh, really repair them, dig them up and redo yeah. them like they did at Herd. And then we were in charge 10 bucks a person and all the field, all that we're going to kick in 40 or 50 or 60,000 a year for field maintenance. Yeah. Now all of a sudden this whole thing just unraveled, you know, uh, I don't know where that 40,000 is. I, I honestly don't. What I understood is that there was a pre, in previous years they were paying money and then they're not anymore. What I've been doing. It looks like it's in the park and rent. <laughs> so I don't, know where, I don't know where that is. Charlie. So, so the, the deal was that the Capital Planning Committee took on, as Al said, uh, called field replacement or whatever, you know, the larger project. Oh, yeah. But the, the rec department or the Parks and Recreation and DPW were supposed to split the costs evenly of maintenance. Right. It wasn't that they had to do 40000 or 30000 or whatever. They were going to split the cost yeah. of maintaining the fields. Whatever that was. Whatever right. that was. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're not doing anything. So are you, the cost of field maintenance is actually what? Uh, so it is. Um, FY24, it looks like it's going to be 112,000 about. Uh, FY23, it was at 101,000. And right. and it has been, lowest last few years, it has not been paid. It has not been split. And that's all DPW. It's all DPW. Yeah. And Parks and Rec collect user fees of what? Do we know? Is the total user fees? Well, here. 65, 70 grand. I mean, on their fields, I don't know, but all of their money is user fees. No, they have mines in here for field. For yeah, no, no, no. What I'm saying is spring. that all the money that supports their total program are user fees. Right. So right. it wouldn't be weird for them to raise a user fee. They've raised other user fees. I don't understand the struggle over this, but I do we have a lining? I don't, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, there's three lines for field permit fees. No, page 186. Yeah, no, no, no. I look at the expense side, guys. Madam Chair, just that, that spending that Jennifer just mentioned, if you, if you listen to what Dean said, the money they're spending, but it's not actually what should be spent because right. the fields aren't being maintained. Right, right, right. So right. there's some other number out there that they need. Yeah. Right. And then, but actually, but having, you know, said that, we, they have put money into rehabilitating the field in the last years, not the soccer fields. Apparently they've been concentrating on baseball fields as well. Because whatever. I don't know the priority. I don't know what, how that is determined. But there have been some increases in the revitalization. But who's they? Uh, no, uh DPW in with that extra money that is from vacancies. Yeah. So we, we so <laughs> so we do puzzle, you know, stuff like that. Right. So we do not know. Seems like we have a bunch of unknowns. Yeah, we we do not know exactly how much we mm -hmm. should be paying every year. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. We don't know why Parks and Rec is paying, contributing nothing to it. The only thing I've been told consistently right. is that they're paying for the porta potties. They don't have them all. And do we know what the porta potties? Cost, I guess 40,000 or not. So, someone add to Tara's list of things we need to pursue. Okay. And maybe this one is one we pursued before. We, we 
they might want to reopen some budgets. Mm -hmm. But what we need is we need Joe Connolly to tell us how much the porta potties cost. We need a real dollar amount for what the field maintenance <clears throat> that would be an appropriate number for maintaining the fields is. And then we need to put that all in one pot and split it between BPW and REC. Just because they're paying for party potties doesn't mean they should get out of their share of call it part of field maintenance if you want to. Yeah, you shouldn't get them out of their share now, of field maintenance, and especially because they have the money, they have the capacity. I don't care what Joe says. He, he has money in the bank. Yep. He plans on putting more money in the bank every year, and he has the ability to raise a fee that hasn't been raised in 20 years. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I just ask you, um, how much happens this budget cycle versus something we push on for future years? So I am willing to pursue conversations with the town manager and with Joe Connolly. Uh, that, that's what I was about to suggest. That Annie, if, if you and Rebecca can pursue the park and rec side of this equation, and Jennifer and Jordan, if you can pursue with, with Mike, what the realistic number would, would be. Right. Not that I'm, I'm suggesting that we will be able to afford. Even right. I mean, I, I mean, I think, I don't think anyone has done that analysis. So that's, you know, if like how much would it really to revitalize our field? <clears throat> we haven't done, right? Um, so I'm not sure that I can get that so quickly. That's my guess, but, right, but standard well, we can start talking to him about it. What standard maintenance cycle? I mean, well, the standard maintenance is what he's what he thinks he's paying for, right? That eleven hundred eleven thousand. But is it enough to feel from deteriorating? Well, That's Dean would question. say no. Exactly. <laughs> so, I think we've got to get to something that is real. Like, if we're really doing everything we need to condition the field at the top of the season, and da 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 da, and at the end of the season and all that, and I, I could throw some words around. But I'd just be repeating jargon I've heard. I don't know anything about field maintenance. I, I just want to make a, a, like a big picture sort uh -huh. of comment is that when I push Mike on things like this, he, he gets a little bit protective of his field. You know, he doesn't feel like he's screwing up on things, even though he's not, right? And he, he's <coughs> been around Arlington enough to know that we have champagne paste on a lemonade budget, right? Type of thing, right? Like so, so that money is tight and that we don't. We never budget for what we really want for lots of things, right? No, I, I get that. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that I'd like a realistic picture of what's neglected. Yeah. You know, what what are the things that you would budget for if you could? Like I get that from the library because I asked. Yeah. So well, and, and I guess a question I would have is if you had double the amount that you have. What would we get? What could you do? And right. why can't we get double the amount that we have if Parks and Rec is sitting on money? And right. could be sitting on more mm -hmm. if they were to pursue increased food. Okay. Yeah. And I to, everybody should well, my whole relationship everyone, with everyone, one shot. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. Every, everyone should pay. Yeah. And that yeah. was the deal. Yeah. And it sort of it fell fizzled. Hard. I mean, so it, mm -hmm. it sort of fell apart around COVID times, but then court of price happened around the same time. So it needs to get a budget things happen, right? Well, when I was doing this budget, mm -hmm. Parks and Rec, the money started falling off. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, it just stopped, right? So, mm -hmm. Al Jones. Well, I guess the other just confusing thing is I'm looking at the permit field permit fees lines in the park and rec budget again it's twenty one thousand dollars which doesn't mm -hmm. jive with what yeah. you're being charged so i guess i just have a question yeah why right. aren't the total amount of field permit revenues being shown in the budget for yeah. the park and rec budget well he may not be classifying it all as field revenue there's field permit fees mm -hmm. what page so well, there, there may be there may be fees he's collecting for i want to sign the field up for two hours on monday that I think is different than the fee that we talked about. I don't know where that's. Fair. Well, it could be. I just don't see it in, in the yes. right budget. But that's right. If we, if, if Annie and Rebecca, yeah, can follow, we'll go back and follow. And, and, figure it out. and if you, because I want to try to get these budgets, you know, approved, whatever, or or reconsidered in terms of yeah, I mean, yes, if you can yeah. maybe report to us on Wednesday 
as much as you can get. I do the best for meeting the challenge. Okay, so we're deferring votes on this. I, yeah, let's okay. defer votes. And 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 the 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 but let me ask you, does anyone, since Jennifer and Jordan will be talking hopefully to Mike tomorrow, are there any other questions about park, I mean, uh, natural resources and the fields? John. Um, yeah, just trying to keep up with everything. So you, I think Jennifer, you mentioned that the maintenance costs 110K or like 111K, is that what I heard? Uh, that's, so the the, FY24, yeah. um, it's a projection still, but that's yeah. what I was told the projection looks like. Yeah. Now, is that big into the 355K, that, that maintenance line? So uh, we're talking about the maintenance account fields. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's actually the that. largest line item in the entire yeah, EPW budget. Is so we're, we're, we're talking about, you're talking about the natural resources expenses? Yeah, yeah, 355. Separate. Yeah, that's a separate budget. That is, so remember, we have, um, you know, 35 parks, 30 parks, 26 playgrounds, gotcha, gotcha. national athletic deals, right? So, yeah. so a lot of that is for local you know, pocket parks or Whatever, it's five hundred. Yeah, they finally caught me up. I yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the three, are you explaining the three fifty five k net right now? Yeah, three fifty five k is our the amount we spend for our contracted services. So uh, thirty two sixty two oh two is always contracted services. Okay. To do basic maintenance of um, our playgrounds, our parks. You know, you're, like I have a local park park, they come and mow it every while, well, that kind of thing. Um, we do and then. In, Actual more than that for the special projects when we have extra money, but but that number reflects their contracted costs. So it's third party vendors come in. Third party vendors come in. Like they mow. They whatever. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And then as I mentioned, you kind of just caught me up. Now that three fifty five wouldn't does that have any relevance to this whole conversation about you know making the the fields look better? It doesn't. As I understand, that is not sports fields. Those are. Or not with parts, uh, you know, all the other places. Yeah. Uh, I, actually, I'm just like I'm trying to picture like every, I mean, I, every park I go to is 90% baseball field, soccer field. Yeah, I, I know, right? There's certain places yeah. that are both, right? But like I've parked a sandwalk that has no sports stuff, it's just a park. And that's and, the 355 campaign. Yeah, yeah, things like, yeah, and it gets mowed every once in a while. Yep. Right. Any other questions for? For Jennifer or Jordan, before we move to engineering. All right, thank you, Annie, Rebecca, and Jennifer, and Jordan for trying to get more information before our next yep. meeting yep. on this issue. Uh, I think this is an important issue. All right, engineering. Uh, engineer, yes. Okay, so big picture. The engineering provides support services with BPW, town departments, mission, contract, and public utilities, and the general public. So basically, anytime someone needs to do something, if it's like NSTAR doing something, or our town department doing something, or even a private place that affects the public utility area, um, they get involved in sort of surveying it or engineering it. Um, they do field inspections, they do some. Um, environmental reviews and uh, maintenance contracts, and traffic signals, a bunch of things like that. Uh, question about the salaries and wages. Um, so we had an opportunity to get something that we thought was really good. Um, and so we actually had to increase the junior civil engineer salary by 11,000. Um, if you were to ask about that. Um, there's a vacant position. Uh, Mike thinks we're okay keeping the salary number at amount, but if we find someone really good, we have the flexibility to increase the, the, the pay. But basically, it was like, you know, it's not necessarily, the, the higher number is not necessarily what we always have to pay, but we just got something really good that we couldn't afford to miss. Um, the, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I had a question, again, I think I have like three badges I'm looking at. <laughs> um, the 2023 actuals in the budget book is doesn't, is, is, 3112, but in Muni it was 360,000. And I said, why is that? Um, that was to pay out a, we had someone who retired and he got um, overtime, uh, vacation time, sick pay, and a whole bunch of big payout. That again, we don't, we don't want to put this in the actuals because it's not a standing cost. It's sort of a one-time thing. So it gets put in Munis because it's a, it's a real expense. 
but it doesn't have any actual in the budget book because it's not something that we pay out every year. Sort of like that. This guy retired. We're not going to have that every year. Um, over time, um, this is again a place where the budget amount reflects an earlier five year actual. We're going to push Mike and the next time we see this to get a more accurate, up to date five year actuals. Uh, though the amount is higher than we tradition, than is the actual in the last few years, that he sees that as covering double time out of pay that aren't budgeted. It's a small amount, it's sort of as needed when they come up. Um, clothing, um, yeah, reflects the, the clothing um, budget amount reflects the 2023 actuals. 2022 was a little less, but it depends on who comes in and out. Um, maintenance. Here's, you know, remember, 5202 is always contracted work. This is the one that often the actuals are higher than what's in the book. We always budget at 25000 That reflects our standing costs. Those are things like um, environmental surveys is one thing that we have to do every year in some places. And that's just something we always have to pay for. So those are things that we always keep in this maintenance. However, um, in the last few years, we've done extra things. Um, we've done sidewalks on Medford Street. We next we've been the sidewalks uh, next to the Whitmark Park. Um, we've done a little bit of work on the Russell's Common Lot and improvements on Chestnut Street there. So we we pay we spend about a quarter of a million in this category in the last few years. Um, mobility improvements. This is a mistake I made last year. This is not the money from the override that was promised. This 60,000, the money from the override is actually in the capital plan. And I remember Charlie raised this issue, that money does get increased each year, sort of placement adjustment increase. 2%. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is money that the town manager put in a few years ago to sort of cover things that there was a great amount of demand for. And so there, this is something, this is one of the areas that Mike doesn't actually control, the town manager controls it. Uh, last few years, we've done fixed brick sidewalks. We have pedestrian beacons. There's crosswalk work, but it's it's basically it's there's a lot of concern about a particular area from the community, and the town uh, manager says we have sixty thousand to sort of fix this problem in which there's a lot of attention being given to it. Yeah, and that the mobility improvements. Is to the actual construction as yeah so this is one of the few things in yeah that's a good point in engineering most of these things are for things like surveying and and you know consultant <laughs> work um this this one item is also for the construction work so it does cover whatever engineering has to be done for that project but it also covers the laying of the concrete and the design bricks etc the one item in that budget that does that okay Rebecca um, can you just repeat with, when you said that they were putting in new sidewalk, what line item that was for? Yeah, so so once again, when I look at the 5202, which is whenever we contract that work, we have a budgeted amount, we have the actuals, and then we have the actuals in meaning. And the actuals in meaning are always higher because they include all these extra special projects. So in the last few years, the extra special projects we've done have included a bunch of sidewalk work, um, you know, near Whitmer Park and Russell, so in the Russell Park lot. So you're saying that doesn't show up in the budget at all? Yeah. So, so one of my big frustrations I learned last year is that when you look at these actuals, they're not the real actual. They're not the actuals. They're not the money that you see in the news. And I'm surprised why engineering would be paying for sidewalks. I think I think they'll just throw them in. Again, my cousin. Management of discretion over these budget items, unlike every other budget that we have in the town. So when when he's like, oh, let's do some sidewalk work, he throws it into one of the maintenance items. It's just it could be a highway because right, well, it could be a highway. Throw it in randomly. Why? I don't know. It seems what he's saying. And it may actually something. not be his decision. It may be a decision made by either or somebody else who's doing who's doing the entry. I actually don't know if he makes it. Where to put it, in. it it also looks like. Most of this budget is covered with offense from water sewer, which then makes it sort of especially strange to think of the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I guess I was well, not quite as much. It's sort of like again when it, you know, right? June, on the sidewalk. whatever. <laughs> you you walk around town in June, seeing a lot of projects. That is because we had budget at the end of the year. Uh, yeah. Although, yeah. and also in June, but they all get sort of covered in June. Yeah, and a lot of the DPW work weather dependent as well. Yeah, so sure. there's a lot of things that can't be done in February. Right. And so right. June is a big. It's right. not just we have extra money. It's this is the only time we can do that work. Right. So, yeah, I just wonder if uh, the work that he is doing to normalize all these different categories at all with you know, sort of, you know, this, uh, <clears throat> Rebecca said sort of the random crossing and something. But right. It won't, it, won't, had... it won't help with the necessarily the, the point of, you know, oh, I have salary money, so I'm going to go through these other things, but it may help with these big. Yeah. Normalizing the budgets. I, I, I suspect there's going to be pushback against this because if we just add to the budget without taking anything out, then we just raise these budgets. Right? No, I'm saying just in terms of having a more rational picture across the budgets. Yep. I mean, that's funny, but I still want there to be actuals that are accurate. If it's if it's well, that charged to this line item, I want it to show up in the actuals. So yeah, yes. Yeah. So I've gone back and forth on this. This is why I'm trying to report on it. The reason that we don't put it in the actuals, I've been told, is that what people would think looking at it is that this is a standing cost. This is a new contract that we have to maintain every year, and that's not really right. So that's why it's not put in the actuals. But I think it's my responsibility to tell you when the muni numbers differ from the actual from the budget book and to tell you what's happening. And I've well, done lots of and, cross, you know, analysis to figure that out. It should be reflected in something we can see. Yeah, so I've asked her, I asked her to report this year, for example. You know, that's, but, um, yeah. The report doesn't actually act, accurately reflect anything I've been told, so I'm not sure what to do with the report. I think what we need is transparency. Yeah, where where are we sending our money? I, I'm not even. It's not. That's the question I have. I'm not saying that we're spending inappropriately. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Or anything like that. It's just that. Well, that's what I hope to get when I ask for a list of the the items that we the extra things, but they don't reflect all the things I've been told. So that's why I'm not sure how how this works out. Is this a case where we should? Uh, the town manager and the head of public works to uh, come and see us. Yeah, so we can ask a lot of questions. We can do that. Town manager is coming in on the 13th of March. And, and, and maybe the car to wreck them. Do you want me to ask them to come in that day? I can't do that. Um, well, I think we can ask these questions when the manager comes in. But in the meantime, yeah, um, yes, we is. need to still. Do what we just talked about mm -hmm. getting some more information so that we can um, maybe be able to make decisions about these budgets or whatever else we might be doing. Um, but we can tell the manager that this will be enough on the list of things for him to talk about with us on the 13th. And he can bring the director of DPW if he wants. Um, all right, other questions about engineering? Do we want to vote a budget number? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. We have a, a motion. I would recommend. Um, 91. Oh, right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, so 40, uh, 478,175 dollars. No, no we're going to the translation total, Jennifer. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 185, okay. yep. 185, oh, 57. This is a good example of budget where the offsets really screws them up. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I, it's for my done at this time, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
All right, so there's a motion has second. Been, second. Second. Been, seconded. been seconded. All right, second. any other questions on the engineering budget? All right, all in favor of 185057, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. All right, so the next is uh, Public Works Administration. Um, so the main points, um, this is uh, who manages the finances, invoice, uh, pays invoices, manages uh, the grants they receive, uh, water sewer, uh, reading and billing, all personnel and payroll management, customer service, contract administration um, for any projects they have going on. And this is also where the oversight of solid waste, uh, recycling hazardous waste uh, resides. Um, so big picture items, um, if you recall last year, the GI, uh, director of GIS was moved from IT and reclassified in fiscal year 23. Um, they're adding $10,000 to the new uh, 5224 materials line. This is to upgrade the aerial photography um, as part of a revamp of the GIS system. Um, staffing, there are two vacancies that they've been looking to fill. Uh, one is the principal account uh, clerk slash bookkeeper. They're actively looking to fill right now. And the principal clerk and stenographer, we talked to him about this position. It's got the stenographer position, whether or not this is really useful for them. And I think that they want to look more into this position for how they can revamp it to be more relevant to what they need it to be because clearly no, you know, nobody's using a typewriter over there. So it's sort of, sort of an obsolete title to have right now. So they do want to do more with that position. Um, and there was also a question about the waste diversion and curbside uh, engineer and this was something that Charlotte was in the process of reviewing as well. They, again, I think they want to do something with this position. Um, they want to make sure that it aligns with what the goals are. Do you have something more? Yeah, I mean, I'll cover this when we do waste, but which is next time. Um, they may offer somebody actually, and it fell through. Mm -hmm. oh, That's why it's built. Okay. Um, uh, so going down. Um, <clears throat> So uh, 5103, this is overtime. Um, it was, the actuals came in at almost double for fiscal year 23. This was um, because they lost the assistant DPW director. Um, so there were, <clears throat> so they had fewer people then. Um, so that's why ultimately it ended up being so much as they had to move people around in order to cover the work um, of what the last assistant DPW director had done. This is before Nelson got brought on board. So. Yeah, I think that's really it. There weren't really any major changes in this budget. Um, were there any questions? From Charlie. <clears throat> so our. Um, uh, on the land and vacant, are they really part-time positions or are, are they full-time positions with charges going to a different department? I'm not sure that Charlotte, I think she is not a full-time position, but there is an extra charge, 35,000 goes to a different, is charged of the salary, is charged to um, the, you know, the, um, the, the, like when they take an TV and stuff and charge a fee. Recycling funds. Recycling yeah. funds. Yeah. 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 That's correct. It's not the full amount of hours, is what I, as one FT would be. She, yeah, she's not full time. So, so, but they are full time position people, right? In other words, the, her, her salary and the other salary would, are being charged to different departments in part. No, that's no, she's not. That's not what full time. There, $35,000 of her salary is charged to the Recycling fund, but she is not a full-time person. Okay. Yeah. And, and the about, other, the new banking? person is not not would not be full time person. Thank you. Uh, by the way, this is a point of um, observation. 
I recently had the opportunity to um, go down to Ryder Street, the recycling center on a Saturday, and I was impressed with the efficiency there. It was pretty much a lot of excellent volunteer work. Yeah. A lot of volunteers, yeah. yeah. But but also accountable. Yeah. Other questions on public works and grant. Thank you, Mary I'd like to just make a point on a question, but on these offsets, um, the way to perhaps look at this, uh, especially for the last month engineering, is that uh, it only affects the salary. So uh, in this case, one could say that uh, about 60 to 65 percent of their salary work or their personnel work is spent on more than sewer. And that's the same with engineering because it's only deducted from the salaries. So it just kind of makes the pieces together. It means essentially the 60% of their time or 65% of their time is spent on water and sewer. Thanks, that's all. Thank you, Brent. Charlie. Can I ask you a question about that? What, do you, Grant, do you know what the total, off the top of your head, memorized, right? Do you know what the total water and sewer Expenses are compared to the rest of DPW. Not at the top of my head. I could look at it. And then, no, not at the top of my head. Sure. Just curious. Thank you. That's a good point. Other questions? All right. Do you have a recommendation? So, recommendation uh, recommends the total taxation amount of three hundred twelve thousand six hundred thirty-seven dollars. Second. Any further questions? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, unanimous. Yeah, uh, so highway, another place where there's extra fees. Thanks for many. Um, highway division contains 102 miles of roads, 170 miles of sidewalk and curbing, eight parking lots, and multiple bar yards, stairs, walls, dentists, signs, rain, and don't touch base. Um, the budget includes salaries and money for small projects. Large scale sidewalk and street work is done by outside contractors, and that is being met through the capital budget. Uh, we currently have five vacancies. The budget book is six. Um, the biggest effect is our ability to plow, staff plow trucks as well as performing needed sidewalk curbing and road repairs. Uh, staff vacancies affect other budget items. For example, if we don't have the staff to replace catch basins or do minor, minor side repairs, we don't need to pay to dispose of that construction debris. So there's just, there's are these, these dependencies. Um, the salary and wages, uh, someone asked us about the increase to the operation manager pay. Um, Mike very explicitly does not deal with any salary negotiations, um, but he thinks that they might have added a staff, which is why during the last contract negotiation. Um, I asked about salaries and wages, temporary. That is for summer help, um, high school and college students. So we get to cover landscape and other like duties. You might have seen you know, the call for if we have a, a teenager or something to call to, to get people to sign up for that. Um, the overtime position has nothing to do with the fact that we have vacancies. It's just that lots of highway work needs to be done at night or on the weekend. It's just sort of what we do during low travel time. Um, maintenance is contracted work for small projects, for, for example, a sideway patch. Um, last year we charged 124000 to that, that slide up. Uh, so energy, so one of the stories we told is the shifting energy, the tracking of places, places that we don't need to track in a few years, but we've been doing it for, for a while. Um, here's where the rider expenses live. Um, and there's no actuals in 2022 because facilities took over that money. So we've had places historically where we track things or one department handled it, but then another department handled it later. Uh, auto, gas, and oil, this is exciting. During October 2023, we started using our own tanks again. During the DPW work, um, construction project, um, vehicles were filling up at local gas stations. They had a special card, they had a special rate that the state had, um, set. But it was a lot more expensive than if we have our own contacts and we now do it again. Cemetery auto, gas, and oil, similar to the issue. It's used for tracking purposes and it gets moved. Um, 
heating fuel, which to 14 is utilized using natural gas. Um, last year's successes were zero because the building brought line. Now the new DPW building is all electric, so we may not need this budget in the future here. But again, it's the energy issues are all um, crazy right now. Uh, we were asked about um, the jump in training in 2024. Um, the 2024 amount is actually similar to what 22 was in historic actuaries. And like I said, 2023 was just a light year for no reason. A particular reason. Uh, 5224 other supplies, they cover curves and catch basins. And this is a place where when we are fully staffed, we spend more money. When we don't have as much staff, we don't spend as much money on it. Uh, heating heel, this is for 23 maple. Um, so deep, so I told you that in April, I pulled it first, the Mississippi River Water Association had been this building, but DPW had it and IT was there. So we were paying for those expenses then. Uh, Martin Highways. So the track lines are contra out. Someone asked why the actuals from last year were pretty low. And um, the answer is that we had some work that we couldn't get finished in the last year's in FY24, and they were done early in, sorry, FY23, they were done early in FY24. So, so the work wasn't done in June, but it was done in July or August or something. So we, yeah, so it's just, it's a question of timing. That, that wasn't that we didn't do that work that summer, just didn't do it in that particular time year. Uh, small equipment, uh, this purchase hand tools, small power tools, things that just need to replace and wear, wear and tear. All right, question from Like no questions. All right, really okay. re recommendation. Yeah, my recommendation is uh, the budget item of one million eight hundred ninety-seven thousand seven hundred and thirty-eight. Is there a second? Second. All right. All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. <clears throat> Madam Chairperson. Yes, Dave. If I could just make a comment. Going through the public works different section, it's um it appears that the, uh, the town is having a problem with vacancies. Yeah. 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 Definitely. yeah. So there's a couple of different issues, right? Yeah. Right. So so the time's doing really well, right? Um we are low if you compare the town manager 12 communities, but we are not hiring from the town manager 12 communities mm -hmm. either, right? So, so Navy is in the town manager 12, but we're not competing with Navy, right? We're competing with Lexington, but not in the town manager 12, mm -hmm. and maybe they're paying higher. Mm -hmm. So we have lost some really good people because they're mm -hmm. other towns just as much. In public works, public safety, they're all the hardest jobs to right now to try to fill. I just don't think that there's the workers out there. And well, I think there's also the sentiment that the private sector usually pays more for these types of positions. Right. Um, and they have more flexibility in how they work as opposed to the structured nine to five type of work that uh, that municipality brings. Well, when they kind of get full union jobs with a pension, they're really attractive. And the county's doing really well. <laughs> Sorry, but the jobs are really good. Yeah. So just a comment. Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah. But the one thing that Mike is doing is he now is registered us as a vehicle. What's the vehicle? Um, um uh, <laughs> oh, what's the it's the vehicle um training facility. Training facility. Training facility. Yeah. 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 And he thinks that'll make a difference with some jobs, with the driving jobs. Mm -hmm. Because our we can't hire well, we can hire people who don't have their 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 so license, CDL. but they didn't have to go elsewhere to get the license within That's a certain right. amount of time. Yeah. If we can promise that we'll train them in that time, we might be more yeah. 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 All right. So we have done highway. We already did snow and ice. Yep. Yeah. Um solid waste. Are you still working on solid waste? Yeah, solid waste. Um I have a bunch of questions out and I'll I'll do that one uh, how about motor equipment? Yeah. We can do motor vehicles. Yeah. 
So we went over the asset management system already, um, but this budget, uh, there aren't many large changes. I think the biggest pass that we've had, uh, the biggest concerns that we've had in the past were regarding the cost of parts um, and just what we were spending. Um, and we had the conversation with Mike and I think he was pretty confident about the management of the parts. Now, a lot of the costs had gotten out of control. A lot of the dealers that sell, uh, the dealers and the, uh, the manufacturers that sell these parts, they tend to uh, gouge their prices over the last few years because they were able to get away with it. Mike thinks that they've got that control and that um, you'll see that the spending um, has, uh, I think, uh, has, largely, um, has largely evened itself out. There were no real dramatic, um, I think, shifts in uh, any of the budgeted, uh, the, any of the salary items um, over time um, was uh, about 6,000 under, which that's just the necessary amount that needed to be paid to make the, the repairs double time. That uh, wasn't a whole lot spent in fiscal year 23. He thinks that 2,900 uh, number is good to get him for the year. Um, out of grade pay, they were just with some of the um, There were, I think there was a long time absence which required somebody that to uh, fill in the position of the supervisor, but um, he doesn't foresee that being an issue, but he wants to keep that number um, at 3,200. Um, clothing is all contractual and longevity. Um, Maintenance, he did want to do more trainings uh, to make sure that everybody's got the appropriate trainings to be able to service the vehicles. And again, uh, other supplies, 5224, uh, 52, that's all of the vehicle parts, tires, anything that would need to be replaced on any of the uh, DPW vehicles. Uh, DPW vehicles, they have about 105 uh, roughly vehicles of different sizes. Uh, ranging from the larger trucks, uh, large uh, uh, heavy duty trucks, medium uh, vehicle, medium duty to light vehicles. So um, they've got quite an extensive fleet that they maintain. Um, parts they do ebb and flow, but again, I think that this is um, this has started to settle itself out. Questions, Charlie. So. Um, did you discuss at all the changing nature of vehicle repair? In other words, uh, I, I don't know how this applies to heavy trucks, mm -hmm. but um, you know, for most automobiles today, even those that are not electric, they are largely electric, and you know, you can't go in there and uh, re replace the carburetor filter anymore because there isn't anyone. It's all electronic fuel injection, and and it's, you know. In my mind, it's, it's like your CD player, you know, you can't fix it, you have to throw it away. What's, what are these people, uh, they've been, some of these people have been here, it looks like six or seven years, but are they uh, able to, to maintain these new vehicles as well as the old ones? So I asked them this question last year and I asked them again uh, this year. So most of the large fleet that they maintain for DPW, they're not electrified, they're not hybrid, just simply because the technology hasn't caught up to what those vehicles are yet. But certainly it's something to keep an eye on moving forward as the town starts to move more. Right now it's mostly the light duty vehicles um, that are either the hybrids or the all electrical. Mike is very confident in the in his workers right now to be able to service appropriately all the vehicles that they have, but certainly moving forward for the light vehicles, for your medium to heavy equipment, whenever the technology catches up and it makes sense to convert over to those, um, certainly we will want to look at what trains are out there, what, what supplies, what equipment would be needed, um, because you're right, it's I mean, the traditional mechanic is looking more of like a computer tech for most of the new equipment. Most of them are computers. But for right now, I think Mike is very confident in his staff to be able to 
his staff and the equipment that they have. Um, we got to see the new facility. They have a great uh, bay. They have a uh, where they can work on all of the um, all the heavy machinery, all the medium and light um, appropriately. So I think that he's confident that they can uh, service all their VA equipment right now. Yeah, we did push really heavily last year, and we felt that what we were doing was very similar to other towns. We weren't, you know, other towns weren't radically transparent there yet. Thank you. Other questions? So your recommendation. So I recommend the motor vehicle equipment repair taxation total four hundred seventy eight thousand one hundred seventy eight dollars. Second. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. So next I have is cemetery. So cemetery, uh, they're mostly responsible uh, care and maintenance, Mount Pleasant Cemetery and the old burying ground. Mount Pleasant Cemetery is the only one that's currently accepting uh, new burials. They do do some maintenance over at the old, bur uh, old burying ground. Um, the cemetery commission makes recommendations to the town managers on the rules, regulations, and the fees. Uh, the questions that we got in, um, the balances of lots and graves and the perpetual care. Lots and Graves is currently $1,045,347. It's $2,000 per lot sold, plus any interest that accrues on the account. And Perpetual Care, $8,673,792. Uh, $500 per grave sold, again, plus interest on the accounts. Um, there was a question about the uh, col columbarium um, and when the work's going to be complete, they're going to be bidding, uh, that was about $30,000. Um, that work is going to be bid out and completed uh, this spring. Um, so uh, some other items, um, there was an uh, increase uh, in 5202, that's the maintenance and that was, um, that was due to a three-year contract they didn't renew. Um, they now have a different vendor um, and that's basically mowing and taking care of uh, the cemeteries. The energy is the electricity, 5211. Training is just any sort of training that they would, uh, that they would need. Um, other supplies, uh, 5224, it's, it's uh, dirt, it's shovels, it's really anything that they would need in order to do the job that they do. Um, something in, uh, interesting to note about the expenses, uh, you'll note uh, fiscal year 23 was a little over 9,000, they budget for 25,000. It's a number that Mike's keeping an eye on. Um, as more people are choosing to be cremated, there's less of a need for supplies. So I think he's going to keep an eye on that number, um, see whether or not it's really necessary to keep that high of a number if more people are being cremated as opposed to burying them. Burying just costs more. I assume that it's an area not pleasant, <clears throat> excuse me, not pleasant for ashes. That's the columbarium yeah. that they're at it, trying to beautify. Just a, just a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a columbarium that um <laughs> that they they sold the front, but they can't put the back. It's not very nice of the one that tried to beautify it. So, yeah. At some point soon, they're not going to be able to bury. Yep. So, yep. so whether people want to be cremated or not, it's yep. no choice. Talk about globally or in our, in our, well, so they start a new, globally, yeah. and I think they started a new natural burial section where you just, you know, go in and grab on a cloth and you run away down by uh, the swamp. Really? Are you serious? Are you serious? Natural? Yeah. Yeah. I believe that, I believe they set aside a section, you I, know, down, down by um, uh, 
what's it called? The wetland down there? The okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Conservation Committee. The wetland filters all the okay. toxins. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Right. Other other questions on on the cemetery budget. Hey. Just another point. I know there's a vacancy, and the vacancy is the motor equipment operator. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the person who digs the graves. Who, who's taking that place and says vacant? They're just cremated. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So uh, we did ask about that position. It's advertised right now. Mike has said that it's been very hard for them to fill. So. Um, that's probably why we have it's probably why we have uh it been paying and carrying such a high overtime for a relatively small department to be able to make uh just, just to do what they need to do but you're still there you're performance yeah that person for that yeah. with skills and stuff yeah. he's not he's not the point yeah but it's just well, he's working two jobs. Then. Well, there's double time and out of great pay. It might, it might very well be that now because I'm not sure. Other questions? Do you have a recommendation? Oh, wait, Topher. Uh, I'd ask the commentary on the offsets. So, what work oh, is the cemetery yeah. <laughs> oh. The offsets. So, the offsets are. That's perpetual care. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, recommendation. Uh, recommend the cemetery taxation total uh, two hundred seventy three thousand four hundred seventy nine dollars. Second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. It's unanimous. Street lighting is another fun budget. Uh, cab pays for contractors for maintaining both our street lights, traffic signals, walk signs, the poles, and lights are maintained by Tumen, an outside contractor. And the town pays for the electricity for to install electricity. Um, let's see, maintenance, 5202, this is again contractor work. Um, maintenance, uh, meaning has this line higher than it is in the budget book, similar to other things. The extra was used for improving pedestrian lights in the center of town, um, and the extra five of the budget is based on the a new contract that we have. So, the, so again, the numbers in the budget, both for actuals and for new ones, are based on these contract amounts that we know is for the year. Um, there is increase in the budget for street light electricity. Um, we did increase traffic signals because we have fewer traffic signals. Um, this is based on what we can talk about in the Right, so that we have um, electricity costs going up. Uh, we have this high rate that is set by contract. Our 2024 amount was higher than it was in 2023, um, and obviously the delivery rate is higher. So just oh, just to be very clear about the the contract that we have, the contract we have is a calendar year contract. So when 2024 rates went up, that affects both the end of 2023. And the beginning of 2024. So, and our next contract is going to be, you know, affect this budget, and we think it's going to be a little bit lower. Um, the maintenance of traffic traffic signals, um, similar similar idea. This 50202 for traffic signals. Um, the amount that we spent is but is more. Um, 114,000, 146,000, 2,000 plus three years. And the additional amount was used to fund some detriment beams and to fund the Lake Street light. Yeah. All right, question out there. Well, I was uh, recently had a talk by the town manager, and he said one of the things he mentioned was that the actual LED heads are out of warranty now. Mm -hmm. So yes. when they burn out, we have to buy them. So I've heard that. Um, I don't know if we've increased the amount. But I have heard that. I think in our conversation, Mike yeah. mentioned that he was anticipating it. Okay. Yeah. Right. Maybe that's $5,000. Yeah. Charlie. So 
And my question is actually related to Alan's. Um, we, we in, in the last 20 years, we went to, through, I believe, two changes in lighting from, from incandescent to uh, sodium-based lighting and then to LEDs. And I'm just wondering if there's any plans, to, if there's any, um, I'll say mileage, I'll say any wattage savings uh, to uh, go to a new generation of LEDs and have less consumption and better maintenance. Yeah, anything you can ask? Um, but I know the change to LEDs was being tremendously back to budget. Right? Right. Yeah, you know, you've talked about that for six years. Yeah. It was huge. Um, but I don't know if we, we will see increases if we for Denver places. Yes. I don't, no one said that, but it, I don't know. Might be a question for the capital planning committee. Any other questions on street lights or traffic lights? You have a recommendation. Yes, I would like to recommend that the uh, 115,000, uh, 100, sorry. Uh, so this should be budgeted, voted separately. Is that? You can make a joint, um, one motion to cover okay, both. I, I take a joint motion for 265,000 for our street lighting and traffic. Second, She's yes. saying 150 for street lighting and 115 for traffic signal. Second. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Yes. Any opposed? All right, unanimous. Thank you. That was fabulous work. And then we can finish these remaining things on Wednesday, but we'll see. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll see. Well, it sounds like we might. Take us a while more to do the field, right? And yeah, not bring in the we can do solid waste. What? Or we we'll we'll definitely do solid waste. If you can bring back some information on Wednesday, okay. um, we'll see what, that would be good. Okay. All right, Topher. All right, so Treasurer Bolecta. Um, so, first, there was a new budget sheet um, that just reflects um, the salary difference so, due to power. So, um, it did get distributed. So would you could speak up? Yeah. Um, so that was distributed. Um, so let me go through the various questions and items. Um, so first, it's too bad Sophie's not here because she was the one asking about the parking program. But um, <clears throat> it turns out that that was driven through treasurer collector. Um, essentially what it is is that um, they have hired, I guess you would say, uh, an application of Helen Ryan, that's a deputy collector. And while well, there's still a collector in the office, um, the idea with this is um, well, there's a number of improvements. Um, you can pay online um, with better handheld devices for the parking enforcement people. And a big one is that this allows them, this will automatically notify the registry if someone doesn't pay their parking tickets and then their license and their registration will get flagged and they won't be able to renew until that's paid. And while it will probably take <clears throat> some time to see all the benefits of this, they think it may be like six figures in uncollected tickets that they will be able to get. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's no statute of limitation in the parking. So that's, that's the new parking. Then, um, yeah, going through um, things, you know, fairly straightforward, I would say. Um, you know, over time, <clears throat> um, they are fully staffed. Um, so they don't, you know, there'll always be some overtime because of things like collecting from the box at, at town hall on the weekends, they have to empty it. So um, the let's see, longevity stipends are clothing and the union happens. Um, the advertising is uh, for takings uh, and also for opening you know, for positions. Uh, and they, I asked how many, and they said about fifty were advertised in August of 2023. They do it once a year. 
um, they do try to very much avoid actually foreclosing on them. <clears throat> they really work for people. Um, the expenses, the processing expenses are for mark and alarm and uh, the machine that folds the checks and, and, and the mailings and things like that. Um, the, let's see. The travel is for the um, International City County Management Association, and the training is for that membership. And um, the membership does come with educational webinars. And according to Julie, they're, they're very good. Um, the other supplies are um, the shredded and water for the office, and they actually painted the office. And, and they are trying to coordinate the shredding visits between departments to save some money. Um, <clears throat> the legal expenses here, tax, take, tax takings are another item, but this is, um, I guess they had to bond the uh, treasurer collector and the deputy. Um, there's some annual reports and there was uh, one, one uh, I guess it was a foreclosure that almost happened, but I don't think it did. I think they managed to avoid that. Um, and then the water bonds are MDR, MWRA borrowing. They can get zero interest loans, so that's good. Um, and let's see. Um, that, I think, unless there's further questions, was pretty much, oh, 5287, the IT consultant, they will remove that. Uh, so that, I believe, is most of the items on this. So, Questions. All right. Then I will move the treasurer collector taxation total of seven twenty seven seven twenty. So that is the new uh the new number again seven twenty seven seven twenty seven twos. And can you just run through real quick what would that why was that? What was the change as a salary position? Um, there was a uh, <clears throat> there was a hire that that came in. I mean, it was basically like many of the salary things. Uh, they hired somebody. Who was it? I have a, I have your email up. Okay. Yeah, the uh, assistant collector excise was hired recently at a um, slightly lower rate. Oh. Could you give me an updated table of so, sales? So yeah, it was distributed. Was it? Okay. Yeah, it was in there too. Uh, three or four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think there's been a motion and we're seconded. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Unanimous. Uh, Jim Penrod. Mm -hmm. All right, go for it. Postage, I think, is even more straightforward. Um, so, um, you know, one, one employee, so I'm trying to move. Um, let's see. Um, the stipends are the same in the contract. Um, the data processing expenses are for the um, Fifty Bose machine. Mm -hmm. um, they are looking at, um, you know, the, the, was obviously the, the actual way below budget, and Julie is keeping an eye on that. She's new to the position, so she doesn't have to move too fast. Um, and the office supplies, there will, there's, I guess, eleven seventy six this year so far, fiscal year. Um, the yeah, the postage to the schools, there's been one shift already. And I asked, well, you know, why not move it all if it's all going to schools, but they're reassessing that. So they're keeping an eye on that, I guess I can say. Um, and then um, the jump in the postage, pound postage in 2023, she said was. Uh, with schools and census mailing, and they aren't rather than billing the town clerk, they're just handling it. Um, and the the offsets are 
I guess, 17% of the budget, which is what power and Sullivan calculated was appropriate for a mail and uh, water bills. Mm -hmm. So it's a water sewer also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I read it. Any, any questions not posted? A recommendation? Yep. Uh, I would move uh, the taxation total of 169 292. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, you sent around um, an email about advertising the records. Do you have anything else? That you oh, that's right. Thank that? you for mentioning that. It was, I thought it was, I, mean, I think Andy, you know, the one that was asking about it. You know, like, you know, read, read Jim's email. Um, it does sound like vital records might, might be next. Um, yeah, it seems to me like they're aware of it on top of it. Um, I don't know if we need to push on anything there. I think if the town clerk is, you know, wants to do it and Jim knows about it, I think we'll yeah. find it. So, yeah. Julie has wanted to do it for a while. And, yeah. Right. And those are records that we can never get rid of. So, nope. that's definitely. All right. Any other questions? Any other questions? All right. So, what we have left for departmental budgets. Are human resources, parking, um, the two DPW um, departments plus solid waste, um, insurance, and water and sewer, and I think that's it. Um, and Topher emailed and said that he's going to be working on. Um, parking, right? It was you that. No, no, okay. that's Michael. Michael, yes. Okay, so okay, great. All right, going to take that over for. All right, and and reclass, which is um, um, Carolyn's. Carolyn said that she wanted to try to do that after schools, if possible. Um, that's going to be tight. So, I'll. Um, all right. For meeting about. We have have scheduled up for March fourth. Right. Yeah. I have human. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So because yeah, we're meeting about it. So, so what I have for scheduling is we'll take up. Um, DPW, let's do DPW as far as we can on Wednesday. Maybe we'll have some information on fields. Um, we'll talk about the um, commissions and committees on Wednesday. Um, on the 4th of March, I have the library rebuild and new class on our agenda. March 6th is the capital planning committee. March 11th is Minuteman. March 13th, the town manager will be coming in and we'll be doing, well, we may be doing the CPA and Scenic Byway then, or we'll be doing that on the 18th. We can do it on the 18th, they said. Okay, so we'll move that to the 18th and we'll do water bodies on the 18th. Hopefully, we'll be able to do insurance and water and sewer on the 20th and then wrap up with schools on the 25th and any um, any leftover remaining business. Um, and that's the, that's the plan. And- um, What are we doing Wednesday? This Wednesday, we're gonna do um, what we can do with- We're definitely gonna waste, but we may not be able to vote on the other two. And then we'll and Michael thinks we can do parking on Wednesday. Parking and then all the committees and commissions that we need to talk about. So that'll be Wednesday. So all the budget the people that sign up on the budget sheet? The the uh, the human rights commission, the Yeah, all the budgets. Yeah. Yeah. Although um two are asking for an increase of the budget. Yeah. 
would apply the M1C. And if whoever is asking for an increase, they, they you might want to think of Yep, scenic byway. So they're already coming in. So Water Bodies and Conservation Commission are coming in on the 18th and then also CPA, Arlington 250, what they're calling themselves now, and then Arlington Tourism and Economic Development. They're not asking for an increase, but someone had asked for them to come in to talk about how they're coordinating and stuff. So we'll try, Tara and I will try to work out those committees and commissions that we can deal with on Wednesday. Um, we don't want our to culture, right? That was sort of like the concern. They're not coming in, they sent the budget. They had a budget, okay. Yeah, it's just right. So we can talk about this that. This will be in the meeting. So we can talk about this one now on Wednesday. What about Human Rights Commission? Because they're asking for that. Yeah, I think we should see if they can come in on Wednesday. This Wednesday? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll ask them. Yeah. Yeah. If they can, great. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then parking. And goal is we will. We will finalize the FinCom report the first week in April. So that's why we need to finish up on the 20th. So that's the plan. All right. Is there anything you want to say? No, just sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> finish up on the 20th. I like got travel in April like that. All right. All right. So if, if, if no one has anything else for tonight, Okay, motion to adjourn. So move. Yeah. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you.